This video is best viewed on a full screen at 1080p quality. Click the gear at the lower right corner of the video window. Next, click the quality option. And finally, select 1080p. Okay guys, before we get started, I just want to do a quick two minute explanation of the method I'm going to use to compare projectors for you. Uh, I do not do what most people do, which is to play a movie clip and record the screen with a video camera. And the reason for this is because video cameras automatically adjust for brightness and other things to present the best image possible. Now, I don't necessarily want to present the best image. What I want to do is present the most accurate image for you. Okay, so here we have some uh, image of some colored smoke. It's being projected from our $100 off-brand budget projector. The image doesn't look too bad, and again, that's because our video camera is automatically making adjustments for brightness and other things. Um, now watch that image on the left as I uncover the brighter name brand projector on the right side. Do you see how the image on the left changes brightness depending on the brightness in the room? And that is the reason that I'm not going to videotape the projected images. Instead, I'm going to take still pictures of the projected images uh, side by side without any automated adjustments. Uh, this will give you a much more accurate representation of each projector I'm reviewing for you. I'm projecting all of the images in a dimly lit room rather than a dark room. For this, I'm using two shaded lamps placed about 12 feet diagonally from the center of the screen, and each lamp has a small 15-watt chandelier bulb in it. The ambient light in the room measures 4 lumen at the center of the screen. So the two most important factors in your home theater are obviously the projector and the screen, and that's why I want to quickly mention the type of screen I'm projecting onto. In this case, it's a spandex projector screen instead of the more typical blackout material. There are several advantages to this type of screen, uh, one of which it can attach to a $30 backdrop stand. Uh, it's easy to do. You just take some five spring clips and you attach the screen to the backdrop stand. And this can be used outdoors in your backyard or take it with you camping or to a party. And the screen I have here is made in the USA by Stretch Screen USA. It's available on Amazon for around $80, which is actually less than the do-it-yourself uh, fixed-frame type screen. Uh, you don't have to buy wood, corner brackets, staples, and actually build the frame as you do with that type of frame. The other advantage uh, is that you don't need a permanent empty wall space. For example, the situation I have here is a little awkward to put up a fixed-frame screen because I have a staircase in the way. But with the spandex projector screen, that's not a problem. It literally only takes 30 seconds to put up this screen. Right here, we're all halfway done already. It just simply attaches to five small hooks that are uh, in the ceiling, and you can barely see them. And the corner brackets, the, their bottom corners, attach with a bungee to something as simple as a water jug or whatever you want to uh, use for that. And there you have it. The screen is completely up. Now just compare that to a pull-down screen, which are big, heavy. You typically need two people to move these things around, and you're not going to throw it in your car and take it somewhere, or even move it from room to room. Uh, with the spandex screen, look at how easy this is to take down. Not a problem. And there you go. If you have five hooks in the other room, Another 30 seconds and you got it up. So here you can see the spandex projector screen produces a really good image, but that's only half the story. Check this out. If we pick up our camera and walk around behind the screen, you can see that the spandex projector screen can also act as a backlight screen. That's like getting two screens in one. No other type of projector screen can do this. Now, one of the biggest advantages of uh, rear projection is that you can walk in front of the screen without blocking the projected image. This really comes in handy if you're doing like an outdoor movie with a bunch of kids because they can run around in front of the screen without ca casting shadows on the screen because the projector is actually behind the screen. Now, buyer beware, you may be tempted to go with a cheaper knockoff version from China, but... 
Go with the one made in the USA. It's Amazon's choice, even at a higher price, and it has 147 reviews so far, where the cheap one only has three reviews, which can easily be faked. So here's the Amazon product page of the spandex projector screen that I have, and they have images along the left. As you can see, the it's a much cleaner design instead of sewn crooked and all that, and the fabric is a much higher quality. It's a tighter weave which will give you better colors and a sharper image. And here is a real world example of that. I have the two screens hung side by side with the Made in the USA one on the left and the Chinese knockoff version on the right. And you can really see the difference in the color quality, the brightness, the saturation. And if you look at this next image here, you can actually see how much detail you lose in the smoke due to the uh, looser weave of the cheaper fabric. And in the final example here, just take a look at the stars in the sky. You can see you are almost non-existent in the cheaper fabric of the Chinese knockoff version. So get the Made in the USA screen. If you spent money on a projector, you're going to want a good screen. Here's the product page one more time, and I put a link in the description to make it easy for you. All right, let's get going. Compare our projectors. Here you can see the size comparison between the AXA P300 Neo projector with a brightness of 420 lumen and a resolution of 1280 by 720 and the ASUS S1 Pico projector with a brightness of 200 lumen and a lower 854 by 480 resolution. Our first comparison is a simple white image to compare the brightness. Here you can see the two projectors have similar brightness levels. Let's zoom in on this to compare the pixels. Here's some basic color squares, and we have a similar color profile from each projector. This next image you may want to pause. This is the actual lumen measurement of each color. This was done in a completely dark room as opposed to a dimly lit room. Here we'll zoom in to compare the color pixels. Here's a basic color gradient. And the ASUS has a more gradual blue transition, which is noticeable here. And here's a little bit more advanced color gradient. Uh, fairly similar color profile between the two projectors. Here we have a uh, colored smoke on a white background. And the AXA projector has a crisper image that's due to its higher resolution. And when we zoom in on this one, we can see the difference here. Now we'll look at the colored smoke on a dark background, and once again similar colors, but the AXA has more detail because it has a higher resolution. And zooming in, that is very noticeable. Here's a good highlight shadow gradient. Uh, both projectors have decent shadow highlight profiles. And we'll zoom in to compare the details here. And this one will compare the shadow details. Uh, similar shadow and highlight details. The AXA is once again crisper due to the higher resolution. Here we'll compare the highlights. And the AXA P300 Neo is brighter and crisper. Here's another shadowy image. Uh, the AXA P300 Neo has more de detail due to its higher resolution. And zooming in, that's noticeable here. Here's a good image to compare both highlights and shadows. Uh, good highlights from both projectors and decent shadows, but the AXA has more detail. Next, we'll compare the resolution with a series of grids. Uh, the AXA reproduces a grid more accurately because of the higher resolution. And when we zoom in, we can see the ASUS lines are a little bit weak. And here we have a different grid pattern. Once again, the AXA, the higher resolution, produces a sharper image. And zooming in, we can see the lines are much crisper. Here we have a black grid on a white background. The AXA P300 Neo reproduces the grid patterns more accurately. Zooming in, we can see the ASUS S1 lines are a little bit blurry in comparison. Here's a white grid on a black background, and the AXA, the image is sharper, the same as the white grid on the black background. And we'll zoom in to compare that one as well. 
Here's a good example of reproducing text. Uh, the AXA P300neo produces sharper text uh, simply because of the higher resolution. It really helps out with that. Next, we'll compare skin tones. This is a personal preference, which you prefer. The AXA faces seem a little harsh, maybe too much contrast, but uh, when we zoom in, we can see that the details are much crisper. And a few more faces to compare skin tones here. Pretty much the same results. The uh, AXA faces are a little bit more pale than the ASUS, but uh, zooming in, we can see they still produce a nice image. Here is a good image for color comparison. The ASUS has better reds, but uh, less detail in some of the areas. And we can zoom in to compare that uh, lack of red detail from the AXA. And here's a similar image to compare, and we can see the AXA P300neo, the higher resolution, produces much crisper details. and some fog on a lake. Uh, the AXA has more contrast, so it's kind of a nicer looking image overall. Here we'll compare the colors on the bird here. Both projectors have decent color, but the AXA P300neo has uh, better details, sharper and crisper. Here's a good uh, night scene. Both projectors have uh, decent shadow details, but the AXA, its higher resolution, produces a much sharper image. Zooming in, you can really see the difference here. Here's a good high contrast image with some bright lights in the background. The AXA image is brighter with more contrast, making it look better overall. And we'll zoom in to compare that here. Here is a good image to compare the contrast. The AXA P300neo has better contrast and a higher resolution. And we'll zoom in to compare the resolution difference. Here's a nice dimly lit scene. Both projectors produce good shadow details, but the AXA P300neo uh, just has higher resolution producing a crisper image as we look at the pyramid. And here's a good sunset to compare. Uh, the nice image from both projectors, but the AXA projector may have a little too much saturation. That's a personal preference as to what you prefer. And here's a night image of a bridge. The AXA P300neo produces a much crisper image. And we'll zoom in on this one and uh, compare the bolts of the bridge. And you can see the AXA has much more detail. Here's another uh, night shot. Uh, the ASUS S1 is noticeably softer. The, it almost seems out of focus, but that's just due to the lower resolution. And here we have a green train. Both projectors produce a nice image with the AXA P300neo being sharper, of course, due to its higher resolution. And zooming in, we can really see the difference here. Here's a balloon in the night sky. The ASUS has better green, but it's just a softer image, so the AXA wins out overall. Some fireworks in a dark sky. The AXA P300neo, the higher resolution, is just creates better fine line details. And our final image is some stars in the sky. Uh, both projectors, decent shadow and highlight details, but the AXA just produces a sharper image due to the higher resolution and we can really see the difference here. Next, we'll compare the AXA P300neo to a quote-unquote full-size name brand BenQ projector that's rated at 2000 lumen. You'll learn in some of my other reviews that the name brand 2000 lumen projectors are actually many times brighter than the so-called 2000 lumen budget projectors that sell on Amazon for under $150. Here's a quick brightness comparison between the sub $100 DB Power T20 budget projector with a claimed rating of 1800 lumen and the name brand BenQ projector rated at 2000 lumen. From this picture, it's clear that the claims of cheap knockoffs are not always true. I think you'd agree the BenQ projector on the right is much more than 10% brighter than the budget projector on the left. The same holds true for the quality of your projector screen. Here's a quick comparison between a cheap $30 spandex projector screen made in China on the right and an $80 spandex projector screen made in the USA on the left. As you can see, it's worth spending a bit more for the higher quality image you'll get. 
With that being said, you will remember from the beginning of this video I showed you that I was projecting these images onto a white spandex projector screen. However, if you want to use your projector in a room that's not totally dark, or if you want to use it outside like in your backyard for an outdoor movie or take a camping or to a party or something, there are two things you may want to consider, a brighter projector and the darker silver spandex projector screen. Even though the silver screen looks quite a bit darker than the white screen, it'll actually give you a nice bright image with more contrast, which is especially useful when you can't get an environment that's completely dark, such as being outside with a full moon or if there's streetlights nearby. Now the other benefit of the darker silver spandex screen is that you won't have to wash it as often if you accidentally drop it on the ground because you won't notice dirt as much on the darker fabric. But keep in mind, if the spandex screen does get dirty, you can just throw it in the washer using cool water and then dry it for 10 to 15 minutes in the dryer and it's good as new. That's not as easy with some other types of projector screens. And finally, you'll remember when I showed you the rear projection ability of the white spandex projector screen, well, the silver screen has that same ability. Okay, let's continue with our BenQ comparison. Here you can see the size comparison between the AXA P300 Neo projector with a rating of 420 lumen and a 1280 by 720 resolution next to the full-size name brand BenQ W1070 projector rated at 2000 lumen and a higher 1920 by 1080 resolution. Our first comparison is a simple white image to compare the brightness of the two projectors. As you can see, the 2000 lumen BenQ projector is noticeably brighter than the 420 lumen AXA P300 Neo. Here we compare the basic colors. And this slide you may want to pause on once again. This is the actual lumen measurement of each color. This was done in a completely dark room as opposed to a dimly lit room. And let's zoom in to compare the color pixels. Here's a basic color gradient comparison. Here's a more advanced color gradient, fairly similar results, the BenQ brighter. Uh, better details from the BenQ due to the higher resolution. Here we're zooming in, we can see that clearly. Here is the colored smoke on the black background. Zooming in, we can see the difference in detail quality. This shows the BenQ has better shadow details. Zooming in. And here's an example of the much better shadow detail from the BenQ. Here we'll test highlights and BenQ is much brighter. Much better shadow detail again from the BenQ. Zooming in we can see that clearly. Good detail. Nice highlights from both projectors, better shadows from the BenQ. Here both projectors produce a nice even grid pattern. And here's a similar grid. And we'll zoom in on this one to compare the lines. Here's a black grid on a white background. And zooming in, nice patterns from both projectors. And the opposite white on a black background. And we'll zoom in on that one and the BenQ is better due to the higher resolution. Here the text looks decent from both projectors, but when we zoom in we can see it's a little bit better from the higher resolution BenQ. Good skin tones from both projectors, with the BenQ being brighter. Zooming in, we can see the clear difference here. And a few more faces for a skin tone comparison. Zooming in. Here we have a basic color comparison. The BenQ has brighter colors. And a similar color comparison with similar results. Nice image from both projectors, the BenQ being brighter. And brighter background on the BenQ. And better sky detail uh, from the BenQ. And zooming in, we can see it's a crisper image from the higher resolution BenQ. Again, a nice image from both projectors. The BenQ obviously brighter with a bit more detail because of the higher resolution. Here are the better contrast from the BenQ, which is brighter overall, and zooming in we can see it's a bit crisper. Here's a good low light image with the BenQ producing better shadow details, and let's zoom in on the pyramid to compare the resolution. Here's a good sunset scene, BenQ overall brighter, nice colors from both projectors. 
good looking results from both projectors and zooming in we can see both produce uh, good details as well. Here's a nice nighttime scene. You can see the BenQ is much brighter. Zooming in, uh, both have good details. Here we get a similar green color from both projectors with better shadow details from the brighter BenQ and zooming in we can compare the fine details. Again, good results from both projectors with the AXA being darker. For the fireworks, the brighter and higher resolution BenQ produces uh, better fine line details. And our final comparison, the BenQ is brighter and sharper. So you can probably understand why the AXA P300neo is one of my favorite overall projectors when it comes to image quality. Considering its small size and decent price, its image quality actually holds up pretty well even when compared to a full-size 2000 lumen name brand BenQ projector. So my final advice is as follows. If you're always going to be using your projector in a totally dark room, then the brightness isn't as important as the resolution. It'd be better to get a dimmer projector with a higher resolution. So if your viewing environment isn't totally dark, such as a room with windows and you don't have blackout curtains during the day, or you're outside where there may be street lights or a glowing moon, then you'll want to go with a brighter projector. But remember that cheap projectors are almost never as bright as they claim to be. And as far as resolution goes, I would typically pick a less bright projector with a higher resolution over a brighter projector with a lower resolution. You can always try to make your room darker, but you'll never be able to increase the resolution of your projector. I personally would never get a projector with a resolution below 720p, which is a resolution of 1280 pixels across by 720 pixels high. The reason for this is that you'll most likely be enlarging the video to about 9 feet across, and at that size you can actually see the individual pixels on lower resolution projectors. I think a 1080p projector is about the highest resolution you'd need, as a 4K projector doesn't really add all that much to the picture quality for the much higher price you'd be paying. Here's a screenshot from a YouTube video that compares a 4K projector versus a 180p projector. It's being projected onto a wall, but even so, there's really not much difference between the quality. As far as sound goes, I would recommend an external speaker of some sort, as most projectors that I've come across under $500 do not have great sound quality. But I will say I was fairly impressed with the sound I got from the soda can sized Nebula capsule. You'll also want to consider if you'd like a portable projector that can run on batteries as opposed to a projector that has to be plugged into the wall. The portability of the smaller projectors is always nice, but keep in mind that the battery life is almost always under 2 hours, but it is not limited to running on the battery only. You can always plug it in for unlimited run time. As far as portable projectors go, I really like the AXA brand. The P300, P700, and M5 projectors have a fairly high resolution, nice colors, and good brightness. The Nebula capsule also produces a decent image with really good speaker, but it does have a lower resolution than the three AXA projectors. Alright everybody, thanks for your time. I hope you found this video informative, and if you think others would find it helpful, please click the thumbs up button, which makes it easier for them to find it. And also don't forget to click on the links for the Spandex projector screens below in the description, and check back for more projector comparison videos coming up soon. Thanks for watching.